merchandise sack for God, my rock, and my salvation. Let us pray. Jesus, you show us by example what it means to serve Christ always. And thus prepare us to see beyond the confines of culture to the prize you offer us today. Receiving salvation not by weight or strength, but through the gentle kindness of Jesus. Amen. 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 Good morning, somebody. Please be seated. And those who are joining on Facebook, we welcome you. Come on home. We miss you. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I have found none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasted this soil? And he replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig it up and manure it. This brings me to our favorite story, which is the true story of the tiny bamboo tree. The seed is sown and watered for the first year, and nothing happens. The second year, and same process, water it and milk it, nothing happens. The third and fourth and fifth year, similar circumstance, and nothing happens. But on the fifth year, there's a miraculous and incredible thing that happens. Within one week, human nature, and that's astonishing, and that's the story. But the story here is to tell us not to give up, even when the situation looks bleak or somewhat impossible. God has given us a tool of hope, a tool that sometimes we often struggle with, but it's in us, and he has reminded us often and so often to wait. It's also told to us in Psalm 145, in the 16th verse, it says, The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you shall give them their food in due season. This gospel today is bringing a lot of self let check on each and every one of us. It is asking us to understand our root faith and keeping it watered and nurtured within what I call patience. Amazingly, we look at that fifth year of the bamboo tree, and we think about the four years that it takes us to watering, to milking, how much work goes into the place for it to get to where it eventually shows up at 90 We know in our lives the roots are as we said to control. No flower will bloom unless they have good roots to it. This is similar to each and every one of us. Our spiritual life is challenged by how we hold on to our roots. Are they healthy? Are we watering them? Are we nurturing them? Anything alive that is not growing, that is in the past, that has died. And that death can be physical, mental, and personal. The gardener suggests to us on a roof and then to strengthen that faith. I take it back to my childhood with me and my children. Most of our children do not come to church because they want to. In my days, we had no choice, but the kids have so many more options today. But they come because their parents said to them, I would like to have you join me in church. And after the statistics tell you that kids who go up to the church, they're 85 to 95 percent the better adults. That's why it is so important. When our children are come to church, we see them as the roots. These are the new, that's the new growth of our church. And when they get here, we have to treat them. 
Because we have a Sunday school leader, a Sunday school leader who came and we knew what the time of the day. We knew when we came to church there was a solid direction and a path on how we were going to grow spiritually and also communicate. How we were going to understand what the message was. There was a plan. Our faith could simply say, well, when you get to church today, you're going to go to Sunday school and you're going to enhance your skills. They didn't say, well, you'll be able to summarize your skills today or today tomorrow. No, this is just a leader. Who's going to be in the commitment to what we are about as a church? The Episcopal Church, we are not building it, we are having it built. Well, I'm a non-denominational, and there are so many young people in the church. I ask myself, what are they doing that we need to know? And they say we have specific programs scheduled for children. They learned it from us. We were first. We were those who set the program for our youth. That's why we are having successful adults today. But we get it where from one to the other place. I don't want to compare them to the world back then. But we remind ourselves what we were doing. What makes the difference in our, our children and the roots that we have set up. Today, before I got here, no one had a clue what my kids were doing. And I tried to get them to take what we hear from the butterfly center and put it into the resource center. They were using their hands and their footprint to put on the charitable because it would identify that when they see a service on Saturday, a new service, they say, Give it my foot. Give it my hand. At least they could identify because we would also be in the season where Jesus was just crucified and they would have seen his hands on the cross and his feet nailed. We are in this world today. We believe that the church is in trouble because of COVID, and I believe that we have to build in our church. But we can only be an exception if we are watering our roots and nurturing them. How are we going to do that? Not by watering the doors. We're going to do that by a group, a team, a team coming together. There's a lot to offer. Our challenge is how we feed the hungry. As the governor said to the owner, this is one more year. And think about it. The garden we have been responsible for so many people's lives in this, in this home garden and the building. Because you don't have a gardener just for one plant. When you have a gardener, he's pretty much covered. So the gardener might have said to himself, dude, I miss this one. This, this one can't allow this to be the last one. I have to try to get it out. I owe it a chance. So the people sometimes similar with our children. You are doing the right thing for your child. You are bringing up the right way. But you feel like you're not doing it. You're not doing it. Why is it? Just give them another year. Because amazingly, like we, we came on the fifth year when it grew nine feet in one week. You are doing the right thing as well. But also, it will be just another, maybe not nine feet. But it will be something that you can say to yourself, my work is done. Where Jesus has said, well done, my good and faithful servant. My brothers and sisters, the condition of our roots will reveal the condition of our lives. And sometimes before anything else, we must ask ourselves, do I have roots? Are my roots healthy? Are they growing downward into God's nature, which 